part of aiming to build a network is realizing that who you know is at least as important as what you know. A lot of people see this as potentially maybe unfair, as maybe going against what, what people think is very merit, uh, meritocratic. So what are your views on this issue and what would you say on this? Like, is it is who you know more important is what you know more important? The answer is both. You know, look, at the end of the day, I can understand frustration, but I hear it all the time by people sitting in cubicles and offices saying, well, that person just got the job because, um, you know, the boss liked them better. And, well, you know, no kidding. I mean, at the end of the day, relationships are crucial. It's, it's the way the world works. When somebody says that they have a relationship, it's actually the shorthand for trust. It's the shorthand for uh, they, we share a strategic point of view. It's the shorthand. And for this is an individual that I respect. This is an individual that is an extension of my thinking. All of those things are crucial. So the relationship is crucial. If you don't have the relational skills, you will disadvantage yourself. Absolutely. Learning to build a networks and relationships, as you just said, is extremely important. Do you think this is something that should be taught formally in schools? Of course, it's more of an art than a science. We do teach it formally. We have a foundation called Greenlight Giving. Mm -hmm. And green light giving teaches these principles to disadvantaged communities. We actually teach a 20-week curriculum. It's not taught as a curriculum. It's, it's dosed out in, a, in an experiential form. The point is that you don't learn relationship skills through knowledge. You learn relationship skills through experience. These are a set of, a set of skills that are crucial to adapting in society, whether you're a partner at Accenture or a uh, kid in the streets. Actually, one of the quotes from your book that struck me most is when you talk about how poverty is more than just a, a lack of funding or lack of money. It's also the lack of access to people. It's more an access to people. I mean, if you ask the average individual, do you want 5,000 bucks or do you want to have a relationship with Richard Branson? <laughs> I mean, I think most people would say, I'll take the 5,000 bucks. I don't need Necker Island. But I guarantee you, opening up relationships is your is your ongoing ticket to uh, a fruitful life and success. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that there are glass ceilings that are created by individuals through their poverty. In many regions who don't have fluid flow of individuals through social and economic ranks mm -hmm. are going to limit themselves by virtue of not tapping into the richness of talent that is that exists outside whatever social structures seem appropriate. Through the creation of have and have nots, we're creating social glass ceilings. And you know whether the social glass ceiling is a monarchy or whether the social glass ceiling is economic, uh, it is a challenge. And it's something that you know really needs to be dealt with.